Day. This is the day the Lord has made. We have the right, the privilege, the opportunity to rejoice in it, and we will take full advantage of that. Amen. Amen. Somebody say glory to, glory to God. I thank God for worship. The Lord was speaking to us this morning and worship more about yielding, yielding ourselves, giving ourselves away, yielding to him. God loves yielded vessels. I'm going to preach for a minute. He loves people that's going to literally give themselves, their self, their time, their money to him. He loves yielded vessels. God loves pouring into yielded vessels. Many do things out of duty. That, that, does, that doesn't move God. God loves a yielded vessel, a willing vessel, a, ve a vessel that's doing it from their hearts. <laughs> it makes all the difference in the world. As the Bible says this, where the spirit of God is, there is liberty. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God don't want us to do nothing from a mechanical heart. He wants us to do it from a yielded heart. I don't need I don't need no no um, no no props for serving God. I don't need no accolades. I love to do it. Amen. 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 And so God He loves a willing heart, a willing vessel. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Let's bless His name. He is so good to us. Hallelujah. Thanks be unto God who always calls us to triumph. Are y'all blessed this morning? Amen. Before we get started, you know, we celebrated our 45th wedding anniversary. I want to say thank you. Thank you. You know, most times at the whole family church, we don't really, you know, uh, advertise or we don't really seek gifts for every occasion like that. But it was such a blessing to see the outpour of your love, uh, you know, and I just thank God for it. Uh, we had we had gifts, surprises, Lord, desserts, you know, desserts that we had no, you know, we just, you know, those desserts, dear Jesus. You know, you, you, you can you can kind of, you, you know, you, you really need the discipline. You need the Holy Ghost. But I thank God, amen. I think desserts that were supposed to last a week, last in two days, I, we can't have that kind of stuff. I'm going to go back. You know, we're talking about faith and confession. I used to confess this, and I'm going to go back to it. One of my confessions was, I don't desire to eat so much. And you see, I don't know if y'all know it. Now, most, some of y'all, a lot of y'all know, I was, I was a lot bigger guy. But I, I but but I, I'm see I'm gonna have to go back to my confession. I don't desire to eat so much, and see I don't even remember the whole thing. But it's see I become overweight, so I, I gotta get that back in my mouth, and so it can get in in my heart, so I can I can I can uh have have more more discipline when it comes to this eating. Oh, I, I see y'all don't like that too much, <laughs> but it's the truth anyway. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. But so I, again, I want to say thank you all. It was a, a, a truly a blessing. Uh, we, are, we are still celebrating 45 years. We're going to be celebrating it for the next 45 days. Amen. 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 Glory to God. And uh, we're just grateful. Amen. Amen. We're working on a little trip to get out of town for, for a minute. And uh, because, you know, uh, I've come, I found out life is precious. Life is precious. And you have to value, you have to value those that are close to you. And you have to understand how valuable it is to have people around you who love you. And who, and if you can put up with a man for 45 years, dear Jesus, dear Jesus. Glory to God. When you can put up with a, a, this man, I'm going to put it like this, for 45 years. I know, I know David Walker. He is a piece of work. Some things Lisa tell me about Danny, I just say, Lord, Lord, Lord. Because <laughs> I know where, he, where it came from. 
But I thank God, I thank God for the Holy Ghost. And I thank God for love because we find out that love covers, oh Lord, a multitude. <laughs> thank God for love. Amen. So again, I'm so grateful. I don't want to spend too much time there, but I, I am so grateful for you all, whole family and my family. I just, uh, we just received so many blessings and it was just a blessing. Amen. Hallelujah. So this morning we are talking about the power of confession, the power of the spoken word. Amen. So let's get our Bibles in our hand. I need somebody to get my phone. I need to share this. I need somebody to say we lie. Glory to God. Pass that back. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Y'all ready? Come on, let's do this Bible confession. Say it with me. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. All right, we're going to start all over. Yo, now let's get focused. Let's get focused. Y'all ready? Ready? Let's go. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. This morning, I will be taught the word of God. I boldly say, my mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I thank you, Father, that I am a hearer and a doer of the word. After hearing the word, I'll never be the same. I'll never be the same. I'll never be the same. In Jesus' name. Come on, say it with me. Favor, increase, and promotion are in my life now. I thank you, Father, that I'm well rested. And I'm ready to receive the word. I thank you, Father. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Now, I know some of y'all missing out on that hour. It was so funny. It was so funny. You know, Lisa was reminding everybody and group me about the hour. And Miss Candy put in there, I'm not liking this. I'm not, I'm not loving this. I'm not putting no hearts here for this. <laughs> Amen. We, we felt your pain. We felt your pain. But you see, you know, as you get older, and I'm not old. I'm still a young man, but you get wiser. I took advantage of going to bed early last night. I said, I am not losing that hour. <laughs> no. Amen. Staying up here to 12 o'clock and now it's 1 o'clock. No, I ain't going there with, uh, with y'all. Get in this bed early. The Lord is good. Amen. So we're talking about faith and confessions and we're talking about this morning, the power of the spoken word is so important. I hope after the, today that you really realize how important your words are and that you really, really get a good uh, hold on how important the word of God is. Amen. Amen. So we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna put that together. Amen. Now I need somebody to bring me some water up here because I can already see, I don't know. I need some water. But listen to what the Bible says. I'm reading from the King James Version. This is added, this is an added verse. And it's Hebrews 10, 23 through 25. Thank you. Hebrews 10, 23 through 25. This is where our, this is our main verse for this particular teaching. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Go ahead, oh, Joy. I was pulling, Joy. You, you pulled it right up. 
That's right. Suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not. For such is the kingdom of God. Amen. But anyway, let's read this, this verse of scripture. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. For he is faithful that promised. Now we can easily put let us hold fast the confession of our faith. Because that word is the same word in the Greek. That word confession and profession is the same word. Word. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. For he is faithful that promised. And let us consider, oh, I'm going to read a little further. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. Amen? Amen. We're going to provoke one another to love and to good works. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is. But exhorting one another and so much the more as we see the day approaching. Amen? So we can see the day is approaching. So we want to make sure that we are loving each other, that we are encouraging each other, that we are building each other up. Amen. Amen. Now, but, with the, but what we want to talk about this morning is holding fast to our confession of faith and how powerful the word of God is. The word of God is so very powerful. And when you understand that, and when you understand that you are a spirit, then you're going, to be, you're going to be much more careful about the words that's coming out of your mouth. Amen? Amen. Now let's just look at the word, talk about, uh, let's just look at a few scriptures concerning the word of God. Psalm 119, verses 89 and 90. Listen what it says. This is the Passion Translation. Oh, how I love this translation. It makes things so plain. It talks in today's language. Listen what it says. Standing firm in the heavens and fastened to eternity is the word of God. Then it says, your faithfulness flows from one generation to the next. All that you created sits firmly in place to testify of you. That's good. Amen. Psalm 119 Verse 152, I've known all along how true and unchanging is every word you speak. That's every word that God speaks. He said how true it is, how unchanging it is, and is established forever. Say forever. forever. But then 1 Peter 1.25, Peter says, and the word of the Lord endures forever. And this is the word that was announced to you. It's the word that was announced to you. This is the word that you and I are to live from. Amen. Amen. Then it says, Proverbs 18.21. I'm, I'm, this, this is a, a couple of verses I may have added. It says this here in the CEV, words can bring death or life, talk too much, and you will eat everything you say. Then in the ESV, it says death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruits. You see? And so, it's, it, it, the Bible tells us how important it is that we renew our minds to the word of God. Am I right? Amen. And the Bible says that you and I, if we look at, at the word in Ephesians, it tells us that you and I are to be imitators of God. Amen. 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 We are to walk in the newness of life. Amen. Amen. And so when, you know, now that we've become born again, it is so very important that we learn the language of the kingdom. We learn to talk. We learn to say the things that God have already said about us, that God has already said belong to us. 
I am what the word says I am. I have what the word says I have. And I can do what the word says I can do. But I can't have it both ways. I can't speak death and expect life. I have to make a quality decision how valuable my words are. And the words, not only my words, but the words that I speak over the ones I love and the ones I care for, the ones that God has given me charge to take care of, I must make sure that I'm speaking words that represent life. And I must speak words of faith over them. See, the beautiful thing about faith is I don't have to go by what I see. <laughs> the Bible says, faith, call those things that be not as though they were. So there are some things I may see that I don't even like in my children, but I can change that. I can change it with the words that I speak over them. I can, I can get some word from the word of God and begin to speak that over their lives instead of what, what appears. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because what appears to be is temporal. In other words, it's subject to change. Come on, somebody. Amen. So I can either, I can enforce or affirm what I see happening in their life, or I can change it by speaking words of, uh, concerning the word of God over their lives. When our children were coming up, I would always, I would let them know that they were the leaders. I would let my, my boys know they were mighty men of God, mighty men of valor. They were on top and rising. God was blessing them and using them mightily. I told my daughters they were beautiful. Daddy, you just say that because I'm your daughter. No, baby, I'm saying it because you are beautiful and I want you to know it. I want you to know you heard it here first. Words that we speak are either building up or they are tearing down. I want to make it clear there is no middle ground. They're doing one or the other. And we must realize, recognize how important it is. Uh, 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 Jesus, before Jesus did one miracle, one, before he did one miracle, as Jesus came up out of the water, the Bible said there was a voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. We got to get, we got to get the, the language of death over our children, over our family, over our spouses. We got to stop speaking this language of death and speak life. life. Speak what we want to see. Hallelujah. Oh Lord, can I get some help in here this morning? I need, I, I need. Do anybody have any keyboard experience? I'm just, I'm just, all right, all right, let's go. Let's read Mark, the fourth chapter, the 15th verse. Mark 4, 15. Look what it says. I said Mark, yeah, Mark 4, 15. And these are the ones by the wayside where the word is sown. Where the what is sown? Word. When they hear, Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in their hearts. Now, I'm going to explain that scripture with another scripture just a little bit as we go further down. But remember that. And these are the ones by the wayside where the word is sown when they hear, when they hear, when they what? Hear. 
Satan comes, how, how fast he comes. And take away the word that was sown in their hearts. Well, let me just do it now. Now, Matthew, the 13th chapter, the 19th verse, uh, is Matthew account of this same verse. He says, when anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, uh-oh, so we see how important it is to get an understanding of the word. Then the wicked one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. So you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, the word is so valuable. Listen to me. That's why I'm emphasizing to you, hearing the word on a Sunday is not enough. This has to be a part of your everyday life. Because the word of God, if I'm to live from the word of God, uh, come on, y'all. I don't just live from my Sunday, what I'm, what I'm going to eat after church today. I just don't live from that one meal. Not, I, don't, I don't expect that one meal to keep me until next Sunday. So it is important that when we hear the word, we, we, to make sure that we understand what we are hearing, we begin to meditate it, go over it, go over the message. God has made it so now, you know, we used to charge for tapes, charge for CDs, charge for all that. God has made it so now it's available. And all you need is the initiative, the want to, to go over it and over it until you get it. Amen. So when anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, then the wicked one comes and snatches it away what was sown in his heart. This is he who receives seed by the wayside. Never take experience over the word of God. See, a lot of times we go by what this one experience. Pastor, I know he was a man of God. He really fasted and prayed. He was at church all the time. And he still died. Never take experience over the word of God. What does God's word have to say about it? In other words, nobody's life experience is as important as the word of God. It may be your close relative, but never, it, may, it, it does not matter who it is. God's word is forever. God's word is eternal. God's word, you can count on it, you can hold on to it, because God will do what he said he will do. The word of God is the most powerful thing that exists. It's the most powerful thing. Yes, sir. So there are, there are truths that you have to have established in your heart concerning the word. And I love this because I, I can remember when, and I, and when, when Daniel and Lisa, when they had their first child and they were, and, 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 and we, we, there were all kind of reports. But I remember one thing that they settled immediately. And it so blessed me. They said, regardless of what happened, God is not going to get charged for this. God is not, we're not blaming God for this. <laughs> Y'all don't know how powerful that is. You see, you see, because when you, when you are a giver, when you tithe, when you, when you bring offerings, when you sow seeds, when you confess the word. And things don't go like you think they were going to go. It's easy to back off. It's easy to say, where is God? But always remember this here. God is always there. And his word is still true. Regardless if you don't get the results that you thought you were going to get. I can tell you with complete certainty. 
that God never miss it. Amen. See, your heart has to be established in this. See, you have to come to a point. Glory to God. You have to come to a point. My heart is established in the fact that God can't miss it. My heart is established in the fact that God cannot lie. So, four truths that your heart must be established in. Number one, the word does not change regardless of what happens to me. The word will change you. Oh, it'll change you. Be ye transformed how? By the renewing of your mind. Amen. Listen to this here. The word works. Yes, sir. Amen. Tell your neighbor the word works. Then I must have my, it, it must be established in my heart. I choose to agree with the word of God. And I choose to disagree with any thoughts, conditions that are contrary to the word. Come on, come on. God's word, God's word is going to come to pass. God's word, if I, if, and if I hold fast to my confession of faith, God's going to bring his word to pass in my life. Amen. Amen. Listen what the Bible says. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. John 1, 1, 2. And the word was with God. And the word was God. Let me read it again. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word. And the word. And the word. So you cannot separate God and his word. <laughs> Boy, that's a powerful statement. We found out that his word lived and abided forever. We find out that his word does not change. So if we can get in our hearts how powerful the word of God. Let me ask y'all, has the word of God changed you? I know the word of God has changed me. I know, I know this David Michael Walk. I know God. The word of God changed my life. It's the, it's the word, amen? The Bible says in uh, John 1, 2, he was in the beginning with God. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness. And darkness did not comprehend it. Amen? So, light is shining. Light is shining. You, we have to ask God to open up our hearts, open up the eyes of our understanding that we might receive the light of God's word. Yes, yes, yes. As, as, as a believer, you're always open for more of God, Amen. more of his word. Don't, don't cut God off by thinking you've arrived. Amen. Every faith principle, every spiritual law that God set forth in his word is for your benefit. Amen. Say every. every. What am I saying? God does not want you to fail. It is not his plan. It is not his plan. God, he has no intentions of you and I failing. Amen. And if we follow his principles, if we practice his principles, I want you to know we will not fail. Amen. Say this, say this with me. I cannot fail, I cannot fail. In, him. in him. Come on, say it again. I cannot fail, I cannot fail. in him. I can't fail. Amen. Amen. Now I want to read it from a scripture. This is Ephesians, the fifth chapter, the fourth verse. Listen what it says. It says, guard your speech. Guard your speech. Guard the words that come out of your mouth. Forsake obscenities and worthless insults. 
These are nonsensical words that bring disgrace and are unnecessary. Instead, let worship fill your heart and spill out in your words. That's good, huh? Gorgeous speech. Let your words be few, another passage of scripture say. You don't have to, you don't have to be, the, be the biggest uh, mouth. But guard your speech. Forsake obscenities and wordless insults. These are nonsensical words that bring disgrace and, un, and are unnecessary. That's Ephesians 5, 4. That's the Passion Translation. E Amen. See, confession, faith in confession, uh, we can see has been around in the Bible. But, and, and I can tell you these truths were so taught in my, in my uh, early years in, 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 uh, in the word of faith. But it's amazing how we get away from things that are so valuable. So valuable, you see, because it is so important that we that we that we build ourselves up using the word of God, amen. amen. And these truths have to be restored in the body of Christ. We're gonna need these truths in these last days. We're going to need to know how to say what God is saying. And we're going to need to know how important it is confessing the word. Amen. See, when you, when you, when you, when you, as you confess the word, the word causes you to rise above the circumstances in this life. They cause you to do what? Cause you to do what? Rise above. God gave you his word. And he gave it to you to put you over in this life. Amen. He gave, no, no, watch this. You cannot fail. Amen. Ah, you cannot fail. The enemy don't want you to start your business. He wants you to take a break. But you cannot fail. God is for you. God is with you. And instead of speaking negative over your business, speak life over your business. Call your business the head and not the tail. We are the lenders and not the borrowers. We are above only and never beneath. Hallelujah. Watch this. God is blessing what my hands find to do. It's, it's, it's changing the way you see yourself. Is seeing yourself in Christ. It's seen that God's hand is upon you. Oh, that it's not about you. That, that his favor is on your life. Yes, Amen. His favor is going to cause you to prosper. Amen. Amen. And see, a lot of Christians don't want you to preach like this because they say, don't get the people hopes up high. Baby, I want your hopes up high. Yeah. I want you so high in God that you, that you get this. Amen. He loves you that much. Amen. God's will for you. He's, the, the Bible, you, his word abides it lives and abides forever. And God is still saying, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. So glory to God. Let's get these souls prospering by learning the word of God, understanding the word of God, practicing the word of God, putting the word of God to work in our lives. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Look what he said in John 15, 7. Amplified Bible. If you live in me, abide vitally united to me and my words and my what? Words. And my words. Come on. And my what? Words. And my what? Words. And my words remain in you. And continue to live where? In your heart. 
Ask whatever you will, and it shall be done for who? For, for who? For Come on now. Let me read it again. If you, if you live in me, abide vitally united to me, and my words remain in you, and continue to live in your hearts. The word is to live in our heart. Ask whatever you will. See, there are too many scriptures that show you that God wants your success. There are too many scriptures that show you that God wants you to have the desires of your heart. Come on. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of his heart. Of your heart. Come on now. When you rightly divide the word, when you rightly divide the word of God, the word of God is going to produce freedom. It's going to produce strength. And it's going to produce power in your life. That's why I love the word of God. Because you, nobody can put you in their little box. When you understand that God, God wants me to succeed. I've worked for companies that thought they had me right where they wanted me. Promotion was nowhere around but God. God will open a door for you that no man can close. And God will close doors that no man can open. Hallelujah. All right, we, we need to switch to, to AC now. The heater done, it done, done its job. Rightly dividing the word of God is so powerful. It's so powerful. But we can't, we have to rightly divide the word. When you start going over, start going over the word of God and start looking at what God, what does God want from me? We're learning, we're learning uh, through prayer this month that God wants us to rest in him. I'm learning that God want me to rest in him, to trust him, to rest. There should be no stress to run this ministry. This is God's ministry. So why should I be stressed? Rest. In the same way with you. He said you'll find rest. Amen. Amen. So y'all listen to me. We cannot be like people. Y'all ever hear that? Well, you know, the people say this. It's either they say it or the people say it. You never know who, who the people is. And you never know who, who the day family. I never have met the day. It's, the day family is always a mystery to me. Well, you know, they say it. Who is they? <laughs> when we think wrong, we believe wrong. Amen. When we believe wrong, we act wrong. And in the church, that's a lot of problem today. Amen. Because people want you to go by their experience. They want you to go about by something that happened to them. They want you to go by something negative that happened at their church. And listen to me. There will be negative things that may happen. But that should not be you. You should not judge that situation and cut yourself off from God. Amen. You can't do it. I'm telling you, when your heart become established in the word, you become unmovable. Here is the key. The key to receiving from God. Now, I know this is going to shock some of y'all, but it's true. The key to receiving from God is not based on whether you had goosebumps or not. Oh, Lord. 
It's not based on whether you had goosebumps or not. You receive from God because you believe God. You, you receive from God. See, see, nobody can take away your ability to believe God. You've got to, you've got to make a quality decision. I believe God. Paul said, I believe to God and it's going to be just like he said it was going to be. He said it in the midst of the storm. Amen. Glory. I believe God. The Bible says Abraham believed God and it was imputed to him for right. righteousness. Yeah. 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 Yes, sir. Yeah. You receive because you believe God. Amen. Amen. Goosebumps will never produce an answer to prayer. Amen. A lot of times in prayer, oh, we thank God. Oh, we feel the goosebumps and we just know. We just know. But hold fast, not to the goosebumps, because they're not going to stay there. Hold fast to your confession of faith. Hold fast to what you believed in prayer when you prayed. Amen. Hold fast to it. See, circumstances may come that will cause you to not want to hold fast. Amen. But don't let the words come out of your mouth. It's not working. Don't let the words come out of your mouth. I tried that. No, glory to God. Your faith should grow stronger and stronger in what you confess. Y'all, it was, it, was, it was right about, we, me and Veronica had been married 10 years. The thrill was gone. It just didn't seem like nothing was working. Our, our bedroom was like the North Pole. It was very, very cold in there. Amen. 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 And we had a discussion that day. And Veronica revealed to me that love don't live here anymore. She revealed to me she didn't love me anymore. And you know I had to top that. I told her, Veronica, not only do I not love you anymore, I don't even like you no more. Now that probably was just being a little extra mean. But I, can, I want to show you how powerful when you get your words right. Amen. When you get your words right. Me and Veronica, we, we had another meeting. We, we believed in meetings. I hope y'all married couples. I hope y'all take time to meet and talk. I hope y'all don't just expect everything to work out well. Y'all don't know how many guys that came home and told me they came home and everything was gone. And she was gone too. Like, how did that happen? Because communication is very important, especially the woman most of the time is communicating all the time. You're missing the signals. Well, this is not about marriage. This is about faith and confession. <laughs> and so, but, but I had to, see, when you married, you got a wife, you got six children. You got, you got people trying to help you out every way. The people at work were saying, boy, the lawyer's going to take you. I'll show you I, I had a leakage somewhere because I had work. They knew about what was going on at my house. I had some leakage of the mouth. But I had, we, I had to make a decision. I had to make a decision. And I started asking myself, now, David, what do you want? Do you really want to go start all over again? Do you really think it's worth? You see, do you really think it's worth going out here? First of all, who's going to date a man with six children? That's, a, that's, a, that's another subject. No, I know, I know, I know it. But that's not my point. My point is I had to make a quality decision not what Veronica wanted, not what God wanted, what I wanted. Yeah. 
And what I did, I said, you know what? I want my marriage. I want my wife. So right at that time, y'all want to know why I love faith and confession so much? Right at that time, see, God will begin to put the right things in your path. Amen. Right at that time, I got a hold of some teachings by Kenneth Hagin on love, L-O-V-E, love. And he said, he said, love is not based on how you feel. And boy, my love was definitely based on how I felt. I was, yeah, born again. Was called to the ministry. Wasn't preaching, but I was called. Anyway, he said, what you got to do is you got to begin to confess your love for that person. Begin to, begin to confess how much you love them. Y'all know I thought that was going to be easy. I said, well, I can do that. I went in the room, uh, me and Veronica sitting down. I said, Veronica, I just want you to know, uh, uh, I couldn't get, I love you to come out. Because I was going by how I felt. I did not feel love. I'm telling the truth. See, y'all may not, y'all may not understand this, but I'm telling you where I was at. I did not feel love. And let me tell you, she didn't feel it either. But he told me if I start confessing it, I could have it. So I said, Veronica, I just want you to know I, I, I love you. That was it. That was it. That was all. I came home the next day. He told me I had to do it for 21 days. I came home the next day. Veronica, I just want you to know I love you. She said, yeah, all right. In other words, who cares? But watch, watch this, y'all. Let me show y'all something. I'm going to show y'all powerful. This is funny. It is funny. But I'm telling you, let me show you what happened. So now I go to work and now ideas starting to come to my head because I'm confessing I love you. So now I say, you know what? I'm going to go buy a gift. Man, I go, I go to uh, Dillard's DH Homes, buy her a, a gift, have it gift wrapped. Glory to God. Come put it on the bed. I said, Veronica, I just want you to know I was thinking about you and I love you. She said, all right. Okay. Nothing. No, I love you back. No, let me see what's in the gift. Go your merry way. But you know what, y'all? I kept doing it. I start, I start getting multiple gifts, two little gifts. Veronica, I just want you to know I was thinking about you. I knew she liked chocolate. Veronica, I just want you to know I was thinking about you. I want you to know I love you. Guess what happened? Guess what happened? I fell in love. I fell in love, and guess what? I don't even know when it happened. In that process, because first, when I first was doing it, man, I, when I come out of that room, I was so mad. This girl didn't even tell me she loved me back. I just, <laughs> just, I just can't understand. This girl wasted my time, but I would not let those. I would not let that break me. I would not let that make me go off. I continued to do what I was doing and I continued to believe what I, I was going to have, what I say. Amen. I continued to believe that at some point God was going to turn this around. Amen. But you know what was the beautiful thing about it? God turned me around first. God caused me to fall in love. I began to do what I was doing from a really from a heart of love. I began to do what I was doing from what. From wanting to make her happy. Wanting to see her happy. Yeah. Not about me and her no more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'll never forget the day I went in that room. Wasn't expecting it either. <laughs> and I said, Veronica, I just want you to know I love you. She said, I love you too, David. I almost faint. What? <laughs> <laughs> what? I knew it.
your confession, your word. See, you have to believe your words. You have to get the word of God in your heart. You have to know that it's true. It's not based on nobody else. Too many times we have this 50-50 love. I don't know how I got on this love thing. I'm talking about faith and confession. But we have this 50-50 love based on what you do is what I'm going to do and I'm not doing a thing more. That's not the love of God. That's not the love of God. But I'm telling you, the confession of your mouth. See, y'all, I know, and I'm closing. At that time, I think they take the last 10 minutes and just take it off the clock. I just think that's what must happen. Just totally gone. Anyway, see, when I first got saved, I didn't feel saved. And I had, I, the, the enemy beat me up. Oh, you're not saved. And he, I mean, he would beat me up. You're not saved. You're not saved. And he was basing it on my feelings, on, on, on my actions. But the confession of my faith said I was saved. I accepted Christ as my personal savior. See, the Bible says when you believe in your heart, when you confess with your mouth, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be what? Has that has anything to do with your feelings? No, no. Has nothing to do with your feelings. And you can see when you speak in healing over your children, when you speak in life, don't go by what you see. Go by what you believe is happening. It's the words of your mouth that's producing the power. It's your word lining up with God's word. Your word lining up with God's word. He can turn it around. He can change the situation. From 10 years, our turnaround came. At, at 10 years into our marriage, our turnaround came. We've now been married 45 years. God is a good God. And watch this, watch this. Every time, every time I'm challenged, I go right back to that word. Amen. Baby, I love you. Can't be reversed. I'm not, I'm not giving up. I'm going to be here. God is faithful. And see, you got, see, all right, all right, I'm closing, I'm closing. But you got to know this here. When you speak words from your mouth and you, you, you believe what you are saying, those words will begin to produce. They will begin to produce. And watch this. They're going to produce death or they're going to produce life. You may say, I hate you. And you may not realize it, but you're going to set that in motion. From the words of your mouth. That's why a lot of repenting. Should go on about words. That we have spoken. Some words we should just say. I cast them down. Father forgive me. I didn't know what I was saying. Yeah. Yeah. Right words. Are so very important. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Heads bow. Eyes closed. Every believer. In the attitude of prayer. Uh, and y'all, uh, let me just say one more thing. And I was crazy enough to believe that as bad as we were, I was crazy. I was, I just was crazy enough to believe that God could turn it around. Amen. And guess what? He did it. He did it. He did it. Every believing attitude of prayer, if you're here today, or if you're online, and you have never asked Jesus Christ to come into your life, if you die today, you don't know where you will spend eternity, we want to give you an opportunity to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Y'all know this is my favorite month. This is the month, March. It's not the month I was born, but it was the month I was born again. In fact, it was March 17th, which is about four days from now. 
March 17, 1979 at 10 o'clock p.m. on a Saturday night that I asked Jesus Christ to come into my life. I made that bold confession. I confessed Jesus as my Lord and Savior. And the minister told me that's what I needed to do to be saved that night. I asked Jesus to come into my heart and Jesus turned my life around. Amen. 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 I will forever be grateful for that. Amen. And I want you to know this morning that's all you have to do is ask Jesus Christ to come into your life. Ask him. And from there, your life will take on new meaning. Glory to God. You will live your life to please God. Hallelujah. So if you want to make this prayer, if you want to say this prayer with me, I want you to say this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my life. I ask you to forgive me, to cleanse me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You said if anyone call on you, you would in no wise turn them away. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Listen, if you prayed that prayer with us, you may not have felt one goosebump. You may not have felt one thing. But, by, but by, because you said it from your heart, Jesus has come to live in you. And we would love to hear from you. We would love for you to respond. We, would, we have a package that we could send you. Glory to God explaining to you the new birth. And if you're here today, all you have to do is raise your hand and we will have someone minister to you. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Say this with me. Father, I thank you for your word. Your word is working mightily in me. Hallelujah. Say this with me. Death and life are in the power of my tongue. I choose life. Amen. Well, glory to God. Hallelujah. I hope you were blessed today. Yeah. Hallelujah. opportunity to support the ministry. There are four ways that you can give. You can download the free church center app, find the whole family church, and so you Thank you for joining us today. I'm Pastor David Walker, and we'd like to give you an opportunity to support the ministry. There are four ways that you can give. You can download the free church center app, 